human brain is perhaps the most complex system in the entire known universe. It mediates everything that we think, feel, and do, from the basic instincts that drive survival to the complex memories and belief systems that ground our individual senses and personal identity. All of these phenomena that are controlled by the brain arise from computations occurring within networks of neurons. There are approximately 100 billion neurons in the human brain. This is about as many neurons per human brain as there are stars in the entire Milky Way galaxy. Moreover, there may be up to one quadrillion synapses, that is, connections between neurons through which they transfer information. That's up to 10,000 synapses for every one of those 100 billion individual neurons. Now, as you might imagine, disentangling all of these connections is extremely challenging. With current technology, it's impossible to simultaneously listen to every neuron in a mammalian brain all at once. Instead, what we do is look at smaller neural networks and analyze them and how their activities and computations relate to higher level brain processes. One of the most interesting and indeed important of these brain processes is memory. And an excellent neural system for studying memory is the spatial memory system in mammals. Whenever you enter a new environment, you need a map, perhaps either in the form of a paper one in your hand or a mental one in your brain, in order to figure out how to get from place to place and to avoid getting lost. Now, the mammalian brain performs this task in the hippocampus, a structure deep within the brain. Within the hippocampus, there are individual cells that fire whenever an animal, whether a mouse, a rat, or a bat, is in a particular location. Ensembles of these place cells collectively form mental maps of spatial environments, functioning almost like a kind of brain GPS that allows the animal to learn and to remember how to navigate different spatial environments. In order to better understand the neural networks that control place cell representations, and how these representations form and change as animals learn spatial environments, we need to be able both to listen to the activity of the place cells, as well as to controllably stimulate activity in different brain structures that are connected to them. Now, listening to a few neurons is straightforward enough, but the stimulation part is challenging. A given brain area has a plurality of different cell types with different functional roles, and ideally, you could controllably activate particular cell types at particular times and not others. Now, if different types of neurons are sort of like the keys on a piano, you can imagine electrical stimulation sort of like trying to play a piano with a sledgehammer. You can make plenty of noise easily enough, but you can't truly play music. Here at Trinity College Dublin, I'm working with Professor Richard Riley and Dr. Marian Sana to develop a next generation system for probing spatial memory systems within freely behaving rodents. The system can listen to place cells while controlling other specific cell types selectively using a laser. We achieve this precision of control using optogenetic tools, a new method of stimulation developed within the past decade to selectively target specific cell types involved in regulating spatial memory. What we do is we take the gene encoding for a special light-sensitive protein found in green algae, a protein which these algae use to navigate towards light so that they can perform photosynthesis. We insert this gene into a subject rat using a viral vector. By genetically targeting the expression of the proteins to specific cell types and not to others, and then implanting an optical fiber into the target brain region, we can use laser light to activate only the cells of the quote-unquote correct type within the plurality and not others. The system will allow us to better play the music of spatial memory, so to speak, in order to understand the roles and relations between different parts of the brain GPS. In so doing, we aim to gain deeper insight into how memories and representations are formed. We hope that this insight will help us to better understand how memory function sometimes goes awry, as it tragically does in patients with conditions like Alzheimer's disease, perhaps even one day to empower us as a scientific community to restore memory to those who have lost it.